Tavester Anderson led the Racer men's basketball program from 1998 to 2003 and was the first African-American head coach in MSU history. He assisted Mark Godfrey from 95 to 98, winning three OVC regular season titles with a pair of NCAA tournament appearances. He became MSU head coach on March 28, 1998 and led the Racers into this brand new building. His teams from 98 to 03 won 103 games in five seasons. Absolutely. He coached or recruited 11 players that won a combined 21 all OVC awards and four that were OVC player of the year. He coached Isaac Spencer and DeTerry Mays who became Murray State Hall of Fame selections in 2014 and 2019. But there's so much more to Tavester Anderson and this is really cool. We're gonna let his son, Fernandez Anderson, tell you more about his dad who is now a Murray State Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, to present to Vester, we welcome up his son, Fernandez Anderson. Good evening, everyone. This evening I have the honor of presenting Coach Tavester Anderson before this august body of people. And I'm still trying to figure out why he chose me. I said, well, maybe it's because I have the distinction of playing on his only losing team. <laughs> Just maybe he felt so bad about me having to carry that with me through life that he felt it necessary to give me a moment of reprieve from the burden for one night. But I'm here to tell you that coaches aren't merely made. In fact, the best of coaches are actually called to the profession. Just as pastors are called to coach, I mean to pastor, and lawyers are called to seek justice, the best of coaches are called to do their job. No one ever sets out on a path to be what they're ultimately called to be without some twists and turns. I'm sure you all can remember entering college, having one major and changing it once or twice, graduating, and then doing something altogether different. Well, my father was no different. In fact, he was on his way to, to medical school when his former high school coach and principal asked him if he would take one year to take this prodigious, prodigious group of guys and work with them. They were all young at the time and he was the JV coach. And one of those guys is here today and that's Frank Davis. He began to mold these young men and work with them. And he realized that over time, he could save lives in a different way. Didn't have to have a scalpel or a knife. Didn't have to wear a white medical coat or lab coat. He could actually change the, the destiny and the outcome of generations merely by coaching them and teaching them certain principles in life. He worked in areas, high schools, that were, I guess, weren't the most popular areas and were, didn't have a history of winning and so forth. And he turned those whole teams around and turned those communities around. For him, it wasn't just about the winning. It was about the teaching. It was about developing young men into men that would go on to be great husbands, great fathers, great citizens. He was not only successful at that, but when, you, when you're successful at helping to turn lives around, you create winners. And as a result of that, 
during his high school career, he won a total of five state championships. But I guess none of you, there's only one person in this room that knows that his first state championship was not in basketball. In fact, it was in his first love. It was baseball. As fate would have it, though he would coach a number of teams to state championships, some which have records that still stand today. One of the hardest decisions he ever made was leaving high school because he loved working with kids, loved teaching, and he loved molding young people. I can remember him having an opportunity to, to work with Coach Hubie Brown when Coach Hubie Brown was coaching the Knicks and he turned it down. He finally made the decision to join Coach Sonny Smith's staff at Auburn University and he quickly earned a reputation as an ace recruiter. He began to bring in great players like Chris Morris and Chuck Person and he eventually coached guys like Charles Barkley and um, a number of guys. He later moved on to the University of Georgia where he coached under Coach Hugh Durham and he was able to coach guys like Willie Anderson and players like Alec Kessler, Latero Green, Shannon Anderson. But I guess his life really changed when he left Georgia and Mark Godfrey gave him the call to come to Murray, the land between two lakes. He absolutely fell in love with the university and with the community. It was here at Murray that he got a chance to fulfill his lifelong dream of being a head coach at the college level. And I want to say that, Murray, you embraced him and he fell in love with you guys. And so did his family. Murray will always be special to us as a family because of the opportunity that you gave him to fulfill his dream. We have some great memories, but who could, who could ever forget that first OVC championship with Aubrey Reese running full court and scoring the winning basket at, at the buzzer? Isaac Spencer, Rod Murray, and all of the guys from that era, the Terry Mays, it's a great group of guys. You know, Dad spent 25 years coaching the United States Virgin Islands basketball team. And he led this team to several Pan American games and they got a chance to knock off some great international teams. It was during this time though that he realized that basketball was truly an international game. And as fate would have it, he began to recruit players to Murray State from across the globe. How many of you guys remember Big Andy from Germany? Remember the, I called them the Trinidad twins from Trinidad and Tobago. But he created opportunities that would change generations because these kids would go on to get educations, they would go on to play overseas, and it would really change the destination of generations. He spent, or sent rather, 18 players to the NBA and two to the NFL. But what he's most proud of are the players whose lives were positively impacted by him. Those who went on, as I said earlier, to become good sons, good husbands, good fathers, good citizens, and that some even followed him into the profession because they were so moved by the impact on his life. I will close with this. I want you to consider what the great evangelist Billy Graham said. He said, a coach will impact more people in one year than the average person will in an entire lifetime. A single coach will influence thousands of players over his or her career. A coach seeks not to be served by his athletes for personal gain, but to serve them as Christ served the church. Be satisfied not with producing a winning record only, but with producing winning athletes. Dad, I'm so proud of you for following your heart. You found out that you could save a lot of lives. He didn't have to have a DR in front of your name. 
I want to thank you, and I want to congratulate you for being the best father anyone could ever have and the best coach that anyone could ever have. I wouldn't be who I am, and a lot of other people wouldn't be who they were without your guiding hand and without your love and your coaching. So congratulations on being inducted into the Murray State University Hall of Fame. Please welcome Coach Tavester Anderson. That's my son. Special night. Just so happy to be here for a bunch of special people. You are very special. The day I walked on this campus, I knew from that day that I was walking to a special place and one of the special people. I want to share a give me a heartfelt gratitude to so many of you in the Murray State family for being so courteous to me and, and to my family and allowing me to be your head basketball coach for five years. Greatest five years of my life. Before I go any further, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my darling wife, Joyce, my family, my sibling, my children, my grandchildren. There's Dr. Tanja Hosey, there's Tiffany Crump, and now you've met Fernandez, and my grandchildren as Delani, Amon, and there's Kendall. And I hope I didn't miss him by Fernandez and his wife Najwa, a very, very special to our family. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be sitting here, standing here tonight, because they've been, it's on their shoulders that I've stood on their shoulders because they've supported me 100% and more, and I want to thank them for that. I want to also thank uh, Dr. Kern Alexander, who saw fit to hire me as the head men's basketball coach. I get into Mark Godfrey later on, but let me tell you a little story about when I went over to Dr. Alexander's house uh, to interview, he had this nice dining room table, and we all were sitting around, I think Linda Suter was there, I think Linda was there, but uh, Sid Easley and a bunch of other folk were there. It was, I guess, a wonderful occasion. And he gave me a, a, a soda pop, I think it was Sprite. And you know I carry my hand when I talk. You know, I carry my hands a lot and I knocked it over on the table. He had this nice table, soda pop went everywhere. And uh, see it easily and a bunch of them started mopping it up, getting it up. I never stopped talking, I just kept talking. <laughs> just kept talking. And you know what? That was impressive to Dr. Alexander. He said, if a man come over here and mess up my table and never look around, he said, he must be a tough SO so and so. He said, that's the kind of guy I won't lead in my team. And so he, I got the word a few days that he had, had appointed me as the head basketball coach. Mark Godfrey, bless his heart, I met him as a high school player. I was at Auburn University, and he was going to high school in, in Mobile, and we recruited him. He didn't come to, to, to Auburn University. You may not know this, but he went to Oral Roberts first. Then he transferred back to the University of Alabama. But he, could, he wasn't going to go to Auburn University or Alabama. 
because his daddy was an athletic director in South Alabama. So he went off to, off to, uh, off to uh, Old Roberts. But we built a relationship, a lasting relationship. When he uh, played at Alabama, we still stayed in touch. When he graduated, went to uh, coaching at UCLA, he used to send me garments through the mail. We still was close. So it's about relationships. Moving in this business and moving in this world, it's about relationships. Relationships that, that you build down the road. I want to thank my, my grandmother and my mother. They taught me early on. They told me fearful things, don't do. So they said, never whine, never make excuses, and always don't complain, but build relationships. The most valuable and most valuable creating resource of any society is about relationship. If I had not built a relationship with Mark Godfrey, I would not be standing here tonight. So uh, wherever he is, I want to thank him, and I've called him and thank him for the, bringing me to Murray State, coming across those lakes late at night to get here. I almost didn't make it here. I, I got lost. I crossed the river. Uh, it's a four-lane highway and my car almost turned over. If I had been driving a really heavy car, you know the kind of car I drove, I wouldn't have made it to Murray State. But I made it here, and guess who was here to meet me here? Mark Godfrey and Mike Godfrey. Mike was determined to help Mark Godfrey get the coach that he wanted here at Murray State. He said, who do you want? I want Tavester Anderson. He said, he recruited me. And I want a guy recruit for me that recruited me the same way he recruited these other players. So he made an impression on me. He said, we've been together, I uh, had a relationship for all these years. And I tell you that relationships are the most important thing you can develop in order to move up in this society. I want to thank my assistant coaches as Jim Hatfield, his wife, here. I spoke um, on last night with Chris Willard, Anthony Boone. It's not about me. It's about coaches. It's about players that got us to where we are today. I, I can tell you one thing. We had a secretary named Cheryl Whitaker. She was not a coach, assistant coach, but she was an assistant. She wasn't just a secretary. If it wasn't for her and, and how she dealt with us and how she advised us, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. So Cheryl, I want to thank you so much for how you treated us, your kindness, and your diligence to the program. I want to also thank all the many players uh, who played for us. It's about players. If you don't have players, you don't win. We was able to bring players in here, and I want to thank all the players uh, who came in and played for us and helped us to be successful. We, uh, we were very blessed to be able to recruit uh, good players. And the relationship that we built, it wasn't just about uh, the players, but it's about the community. When I met with Mark, Mike Godfrey, he said to me, See, this is the place you need to be. I said, well, uh, uh, you know, Mike Godfrey was the uh, analyst for ESPN, football analyst. And he was here to help his, his nephew. He said, Coach, you will never find a place like Murray State. And you know what? He was right. People ask me, what is so different about Murray State? People who come here fall in love with it. 
I said, it's one simple thing. They're colorblind. They don't see color, they see people. The greatest group of people that I know, if I've ever been around, are the people here at Murray State. I have more relationships at Murray State in this community than I had at Auburn, than I had at University of Georgia. Because you see people, and you saw me as a person, not just a basketball coach, but as a human being. That's the good thing about this community. It's one of the best communities I've ever lived in. I've coached at four universities, but this university here is the most unique university and the most unique community that I've ever been in. And that's why we always come back over and over and every chance we get. There's some other things that I talk about. When I went, came here, our first recruiting trip with Mark Godfrey, we went down, took a week's trip. We went down throughout the South, South Georgia. And uh, I want to show him the, the areas we had to really recruit in order to be successful. We went into this black Baptist church. It's a black church. All, and Mark and I went in to, to show our faces and, and uh, fellowship with them and have a good time. And uh, if you've been to a Baptist church, most of especially the one I know of, they take up more than one collection. They take up a collection here and Mark go in his pocket and, and throw a roll of money in the plate. And uh, after a while, they, they come back again. Mark rick in his pocket and throw some money. After a while, he's finished. He's through. He, had, he threw all his money away. He said, T, what do I do now? I give it all my money. Are they coming again? I said, they'll come one more time. <laughs> so we had a great, great time together, built, built this relationship, and, and we were able to bring players here that really did us good, and we were able to have, have a great uh, a great team here. One of the things that I want to talk about, other than what I've said already, I only have 10 minutes. The relationship that I built here, there are some people who are not here tonight, but they're looking down on us. And they're proud of what's going on tonight because they were Sylvester Anderson friends and fans. Gerald Suter, one of my best friends I've ever had. He took me on his wings. We should go up to, to Paris, eat catfish on a Friday night, just have a great time. A great individual. I miss him so much. And I want to salute his wife, Jeanette, here. She's here tonight. Jeanette, I miss your, your husband so much. He was so dear to me. He was so special for our program. Pete Waldrop. Pete Walter, and like Jill, he was like a, like a brother to me. And uh, his wife, Joy, is here tonight. Joy, I want to thank you for letting your, your husband to be with me and be my friend. He was so great for Joyce and I. We used to go up to, to Paris and other places throughout Kentucky, and I took him on a few recruiting, recruiting trips with me. He had a great, great time. He was like a brother. And Jill Suda's sons, were like a brother to me. So I appreciate that. Dr. Hal Housen was my doctor. He was a great man. I, I miss him so dearly. Before game time, we were on the road. He had come wagging in with a satchel of newspapers and magazines and want me to read all of them before before the game. I said, Doc, you got a game coming up. But he, he was doing that to sell me down. He knew what I was going through. He's a doctor. He knew what I was going through. He was my friend. He was so special to me. Dick Weaver, every Christmas and once a year, he write Joyce and I a letter, giving us all the information about what's going on in Murray, Kentucky. Those people were very, very strong. Benny Purcell, great man, we miss them all. That's what relationships were about. We were successful here because we had relationships. 
this, we did this together. It wasn't just me, Tabasta Anderson, or the players. It was a whole community, and that's why we're here tonight. And I'm so honored, I'm so appreciative, I'm so thankful. I want to say one thing before I leave. I want each of you to be well, to keep doing good things, and always keep in touch. Go races.